Volcanoes form when magma from the Earth's interior is able to make its way to the surface via a vent, like this one behind me on Mount Marahoe. This is usually associated with plate boundaries. Volcanoes vary greatly in their shape, as does the type of material which is emitted during an eruption. Magma from the mantle enters weaknesses in the crust caused by plate movement. A magma chamber may form. From the magma chamber the magma may do one of the following things. The magma may stay underground in horizontal layers called sills. It may cut through adjacent rock layers to form dikes. The magma may stay underground in reservoirs, called laccoliths. The magma might enter an existing vent and blast out the plug. Alternatively, it might enter an existing vent, be unable to dislodge the plug, and burst out the side, creating a parasite cone. Before an eruption takes place, earthquakes often occur. An existing volcano can begin to bulge. If a crater lake exists, the temperature of its water increases. When the eruption occurs, material can move in many ways. There can be lava flows. Lava is the hot molten rock, or magma, that flows down the sides of volcanoes. Lava flows range from being extremely thick and viscous, which we call an R flow, to highly fluid, which we call a Pahoho flow. I'm standing in the middle of a pyroclastic flow. Pyroclastic flows are clouds of hot ash, gas and rock that flow down the side of the mountain. This black rock that I'm standing on is the remains of a pyroclastic flow from the eruption in February 1975. Now these are very dangerous, they can travel at about 100 kilometers an hour. Now if you are uh, caught in this area when there is eruption, the best thing you could do is get out of the valleys and onto the ridges. That is probably your best chance of survival. Volcanoes also emit a lot of airborne material. Ash is debris less than 2 millimetres in diameter. Ash clouds can reach a height of 50 kilometres and can be carried a long way by wind. Ash can stay in the atmosphere causing global variations in weather patterns. <coughs> Ash falls do not cause any deaths but can lead to breathing difficulties. Lapilli is debris between 2 and 64 millimetres in diameter. Lava bombs is debris more than 64 millimetres in diameter. Bombs rarely land more than 4 to 5 kilometres away. Scoria is a pyroclastic rock which has been rapidly caught in flight and so is pockmarked by air bubbles. The dark of a scoria the richer it is in iron content. Pumice is a light rhyolitic rock which has a porous nature due to the release of a lot of gases during an eruption. Gases emitted from volcanoes include water vapour, carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide, hydrogen sulphide, helium and carbon monoxide. There are also secondary volcanic presence. A laha is a mixture of mud and water that flows down from a volcano like wet concrete. Lahars can be caused by one, a crater lake overflowing or collapsing. They can also be caused by heat from an eruption melting the snow and ice on the mountain. On steep slopes, Lahars can reach speeds of up to 22 metres per second. One of New Zealand's worst natural disasters, the Tangiwai disaster, was caused by Lahar from Mount Ruapehu in 1953. 
debris building up in Ruapehu's crater lake collapsed, causing 340,000 cubic metres of water to flow down the Whangahu River, picking up volcanic ash and boulders as it went. The Laha wiped out the railway bridge at Tingiwai. When the train arrived, it plunged into the river, killing 151 passengers. Where I am right now is the site of the toilet block that used to exist here, Tangiwai. In about 2007, when a laha swept down the Whangahu River, the toilet block was actually dislodged from this place and taken downstream. Another secondary effect is a volcanic landslide. Volcanic landslides are not always associated with eruptions. Heavy rainfall or a big earthquake can also trigger a landslide on steep slopes. Volcanoes are susceptible to landslides because they are composed of layers of loose volcanic rocks. Another secondary effect of volcanoes is called a tsunami. An eruption off an offshore island such as Mare Island or White Island could result in a tsunami affecting the Bay of Plenty. Ash clouds from volcanic eruptions can generate powerful electrical fields, producing intense and frequent lightning discharges.